Ladies and gentlemen, Louis Black. Let's, let's calm the fuck down. It's obvious people have come here with some sort of an expectation, and, and that puts a lot of pressure on me, and I don't respond well to pressure. Nice to be back in Atlanta. Nice to see that you've really have worked out your traffic problems. You don't give a shit about it, do you? I guess this must be my sixth appearance here, and every time I, I beg the audience, you know, I plead with you, do something, and nobody seems to give a fuck. I try as hard as I can to explain that you're living a psychotic lifestyle and you don't care. Got too many people. Too many fucking people. But you don't give a shit, do you? It's like, oh yeah, let's build out there. Yeah, we'll keep building fucking... Stop it! Okay? Stop it! At what point do you just say, hey, no more fuckers can live here? Six lanes. Six lanes of traffic. And nobody moves. I mean, that's just unbelievable. And what's truly extraordinary is those signs you put up over the road, the electronic ones, the ones that say, oh, you have 4.5 miles to go from Kiki to Kaka. And it'll be 45 minutes. Why do you do that to yourselves? You know, instead of that, why well, just don't have a big middle finger like that? I mean, let's get a grip on it. There's no reason to put up the, the length of time that you're going to wait. Because you know what you take away? Hope. At least the other way you can go, I, I know it's going to go soon. I know we're going to go. Uh, I, bet, I bet it's now. No, okay. I bet it's now, no, no, it's it. So at least you can get through the time that way. I mean, it's nothing but asking for it. It's either you're going to drive faster or, you, or, you'll, or you'll get on your cell phone, which is always smart. Oh, I'm going to be late. It, that's fucking smart, isn't it? To drive with one of those fucking things in your hand. It's bad enough that people are in supermarkets. Oh, honey, I love you. Fuck you, okay? Shut up. Trying to buy a tomato, okay? Got it? I even carry in mind this piece of shit. This is Sprint. No, fuck Sprint, okay? You work for those idiots. You got, 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 I need to talk to you. Every call is crystal clear. Yeah, right. To yourself, you can hear you. I've been thinking of quitting this business and opening a gun shop here. Well, mainly because I think it'd be great to advertise on those electronic signs. I mean, as soon as the wait goes over like 45 minutes, there would be like my little sign would pop up. Yes, don't you think it's time to buy a gun from Lou? I mean, it just, it's going to reach a point that too many cars everywhere. Nobody seems to deal with this reality. It's beyond belief. And you guys, public transportation, you just, ha, 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 ha. Oh, who needs it? I, it's the first time I've come here, like nine, ten times. It's the first time I saw that Marta fuck thing. Subway to nowhere. But there are too many cars, and you're just going to come a point where I tell you this, you're going to wake up one morning, get in your car, and, and you'll just be, you won't be able to back out of the driveway. There'll be cars on every inch of the road. You know, there'll just be a complete meltdown. People will be getting out of, I'm going to, I lived here nine years, you fucker. How many years have you lived here? People will be beating their shit out of each other. 
And that, then that'll be it. You'll just go there. Basically, then everything will stop. And you'll just go to your car and sit there for eight hours and think about work. <laughs> I came into the airport here and... Uh, then we went up 285 or 131 or 67 or 90, whatever the fuck it was. I don't know your goddamn number system. But it was packed, apparently going down to the race or some shit. And, uh, well, I'm not a big race guy, got it? I'm Jewish, so figure that the fuck out. All right? It wasn't on the menu when I was a child. But I, they're all lined up. They're fucking, they're waiting. They're fucking not even moving going as slow as fucking possible to go somewhere to see people drive fast. <laughs> I finally get it. I've never understood racing. Now I get it. That's what it's about. Oh, oh, that's what a car's supposed to do. <laughs> As opposed to the illusion of walking that you fuckers have. I did the last time I was here, I was putting together a CD. And uh, it was at the end of August, early September. And, uh, and then September 11th happened. And then <laughs> there goes the fucking CD. You know, it's a national tragedy. It is a national tragedy. We all know it's a national tragedy. You know, unless you're a fucking deaf and dumb pig. You know that, but I don't, I don't give a shit. Everybody in this country, as soon as it happened, everyone had that little moment where they went, oh, well, that really fucks up my plans. Everybody did it. And don't have that little whining Christian shit going, okay? Oh, not me. Bullshit. Even the Christian was going, oh, I won't be able to read to the blind woman. Fuck! <laughs> Amazing how just, you know, boop, that's gone. Nope, can't talk. Can't say that about the president. No. 20 minutes on Cheney. Bye. Bye. And don't give me that ha ha ha. I met him the other night. I met Dick Cheney, okay? He's a ho ho ho. I've never stood that close to evil. Yeah. Oh, 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 fuck you. Fuck you. And you're Republican bullshit nonsense. Everybody's, oh, you gotta be, get behind your president. Well, yeah. That's a given, asshole. That's a fucking given for all of us. We're going to get behind the president. We're at war. What are we going to do? Yep, that's the deal. I'm behind him. It's not like a, I got a choice between him and Yosemite Sam. <laughs> it's all about loving your country. Of course I love my country. What other country could I stand up here and say this shit? Yeah. September 11th, well, it was just... Uh, it's a, whew. Certainly through, uh, people started calling me up. I had more phone calls about my stand-up comedy than I've ever had in my whole life. USA Today called me. USA Today. USA Today, who was never, ever, ever, they even called me up for a subscription. <laughs> it's like three days after September 11th, they called me up. I said, what the fuck are you talking to me for? How stupid are you? Talk to somebody who fucking knows shit. What are you talking to a comic for? What the fuck? Well, we're interested in what comics are doing. It's three days after. Explain to me what's going on. Get some experts. Get some other experts. Get all the fucking experts. You can wait a week till you talk to the assholes. Well, we're really interested in what you're going to do now. Well, now you're interested in what I'm going to do? You weren't interested in what I was doing before, shithead. I'm a topical comic. What do you think's going to happen? I'm going to, wait, what do I do? Appear on stage with a sock puppet? <laughs> Hi, this is Gigi. She's a lot of fun. Hi. Probably talk to her for a couple of minutes and then, hey, you want to blow me? Yeah. <laughs> and that would be it. That would have been my show. What do you think? Good idea? People go, well, he wasn't as funny as he used to be, but he's distracting. <laughs> After September 11, things really got weird because we did not have a fall. We had a spring. 
We did not have a fall. There wasn't a fall anywhere. And, you, and your quiet scares me a little. As if you fucking, you're like the rest of the country. Nobody noticed it. It was fucking warmer. It was the warmest fall ever. And that, there's no such thing as a warm fall. It's a spring. <laughs> so that's bullshit. The leaves didn't even change color. They just got so hot and tired, they fell off the trees. <laughs> and I was the only one who cared. They didn't even write about it. I was going, this is fucked. It's 75 at the end of November. By the middle of December, it's going to be 130. <laughs> People coming home from work, the sun a foot from their goddamn heads. <laughs> Sweating like pigs, going to the refrigerator to get something to drink, and the eggs are done. <laughs> Nobody worried about the weather. People were worried because it was after September 11th, and people were worried about anthrax. Four people died. Four. Four! And the whole goddamn country was, son of a bitch! Everybody went nuts! I've never seen any... I was in Rolla, Missouri, because my life is a rich, full fucking oyster. Because apparently if you just say, come perform, I'm like a dancing monkey. And... Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so I went to Rolla, and uh, if, there's, if you're thinking of killing yourself, that's the town. Don't kill yourself here, it's a nice place, there's a lot of distraction, you won't even get around to it, but if you're really contemplating it, there's the place. There'll be no distractions, you'll just get there and go, well, fuck. <laughs> It'll be no problem for you. But the good people of Rolla, Missouri were worried about getting anthrax. And I said, what the fuck are you, are you, are you nuts? What are you going to get it in a Kmart catalog, asshole? <laughs> you, the Taliban isn't interested in killing you, you idiot. Look where you live, you're already dead. <laughs> people were worried about anthrax. People were worried about smallpox. I don't worry about smallpox. I got a vaccine. I got a scar to prove it. Because back then, they didn't have the proper equipment. They used a Coke cap, and they scratched me. <laughs> so if I get smallpox, I'm going to sue whoever it is you fucking sue when you get smallpox. But I am, because uh, they took me out of class to get that vaccine. And if I'd been in that class, I wouldn't be doing this bullshit. <laughs> it's where things went wrong. I got off track. People were worried about smallpox and anthrax. Meanwhile, we hadn't had a spring, a legitimate spring, in 50 fucking years. And now it was fall, and it was spring. And I kept screaming at people, look at the calendar, we're going backwards. We're going fucking backwards. I was afraid it might be environmental terrorism. Some Afghani in one of those mountains back there in a cave with aluminum foil on his head got a hold of a couple of black and white TVs and he was fucking with us. <laughs> it's not environmental terrorism, then, it's, then it could have been, uh, well, it's obviously global warming. That's what it is. We, we're not gonna deal with that either. 135 nations signed the Global Warming Treaty. We didn't. We didn't. We wonder why the world thinks we're arrogant. <laughs> 135 nations signed the treaty, we go, hey, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> we don't give, suck on our shit, suck on our shit. You sign the treaty, asshole. You sign the fucking treaty. And then we do whatever we want, but pretend, pretend you're interested. 135 nations, nations that couldn't even read the treaty, signed the treaty. I had to explain them to them, burr, burr, sweaty, sweaty, signy, signy. We didn't sign it because George W. Bush Jr., our president, uh, doesn't believe there's global warming because I guess he doesn't have any Skin! Here's a man who was an idiot until September 11th, and, and now he's a genius. And in between, he reminded us he was an idiot just recently when he choked on a pretzel. You gotta be an idiot to choke on a pretzel. No one has ever choked on a pretzel. No one. You've never heard of it. No one's ever heard of it. You can get on the phone and call all the people you want. Have them call everybody you want. You won't find anybody who choked on a pretzel. And if they choked on a pretzel, they're smart enough not to tell anybody. You don't choke on a pretzel, you might get and it comes up. 
Only way he could have choked down a pretzel if he took one of those long ones and said, look, I'm a sword swallower. <laughs> Weather Channel won't even talk about global warming. They're a group, that's, a, that's unbelievable. And they're down here, aren't they? We should just get in some cars and go kick ass. That's another thing, you guys. It's in your community, stop them, stop them. I'm serious. What's, it's a worthless channel, there's no information. We're going through global warming, and they're fucking not telling us nothing. Not a goddamn thing, not even a special, not even a, hey, you know, it's hot because, fuck. Make up something, come up with an excuse, you dick. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Worthless information. I'd rather watch a bowl of shit. I would. I would, an esteeming bowl of shit. It's, it's gotta be, otherwise it looks fake, you wouldn't watch. You wouldn't. No, that's fake, even a three-year-old go, fuck that, mommy. You know, it's the most watched cable channel in America. I'll repeat that. It is the most watched cable channel in America. They were worried about the terrorists immobilizing us, and a portion of our countrymen watch weather. Okay? You don't get any more immobile than that. Unless you're in a goddamn coma. That means you're saying, I go to the window, but it's too far. <laughs> you want to know what the weather is, you go to the window, you open it up and you stick your hand out. And if you want to know what the temperature is, you drive by a bank. <laughs> I stopped watching the Weather Channel a year ago, I was going to Detroit, and they said I'd been in the upper 60s for the weekend. I packed accordingly. It snowed. So as I stood on the sidewalk in my shorts, looking up at the gray sky, snow pelting me in the face, I thought, wow, the fuckers weren't close. I don't think there should be a weather channel, just a bunch of chimpanzees with darts. You give them the darts and a dartboard, and they throw the darts. 8 and 9 is 17, 13 is 30, 11 is 41, and 6? Well, 6 is 47. Our chimp says it'll be 47. <laughs> then you got signed, it's 82. You go, well, what are you going to do? The weatherman's a fucking chimp. <laughs> I watched the Super Bowl again this year. Why? Because I'm an idiot. I've watched the Super Bowl every year since the beginning of the Super Bowl. I do this for two reasons. One, I have no religion. I was born and raised Jewish, and that didn't work, and then I went to some of the others and went, uh, fuck it. But I do believe it's very, very important for man to have a ritual. And the Super Bowl takes place on a Sunday, so I'm trying. I also watch it because the NFL has done everything since the inception of the Super Bowl to try to make it unwatchable. And fuck you, I'm gonna watch it anyway. <laughs> they have eight hours of a pregame show. Who's watching that? <laughs> There's not enough liquor in the universe. I'd rather go ice fishing, which is the dumbest thing a man can do. <laughs> Sitting essentially in an outhouse, it's 30 below. You've cut a hole in the ice and you're fishing for fish that you shouldn't eat because any fish that's down there is fucking stupid. <laughs> the game begins and they give you statistics that make no sense. You don't even know what they're about. They talk to their families. I could give a rat's ass about their families. That's a story. I'm not interested in a story. I'm interested in the game. I'm interested in the game. Stories are bullshit. If I want a story, I turn to the Lifetime Network, okay? I'm surprised they just don't have a camera up their ass to show you what they ate for lunch. Oh look, he had a little beef this afternoon. That's why he only made eight yards. And don't think it won't happen. Don't think it won't happen. They've shown you everything on the field. There's only one place to go. The game began and there was six minutes of it. And then they cut to a commercial. The commercials lasted eight minutes. When they came back, something historic had happened. For the first time in my entire life, I couldn't remember who was playing. 
And by the end of the first quarter, I didn't care who was playing. I basically just wanted to see the commercials. I'd spend the time during the game at the refrigerator just looking at shit. The NFL had achieved what they'd always set out to achieve, to make the commercial more important than the game. And it is. The most money spent on commercials is spent during the Super Bowl. It's the most expensive commercial minute you can imagine. And I love these ads. I love them. Because their ads, some of them are like mystery stories. They're big and boldly produced and you have no idea what the fuck they're advertising. Three rabbits are sitting on a log and one goes home and hangs himself. Buy a bike. Pepsi, Pepsi kicks off their ad campaign then. And Pepsi and Coke, can somebody explain to me why Pepsi and Coke advertise? Are, 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 are we missing something? Seriously, everyone in this room has drunk enough Pepsi and Coke during your lifetime, you could piss it for a week. So what are they doing? They spend a gazillion dollars advertising. But stop it! Just send us a coupon, here's $10, try our shit. When was the last time, if you're a, a Coke drinker, it's being Atlanta, when was the last time if they had a, uh, a Pepsi ad on and you thought, maybe I'm wrong? <laughs> I've, been getting, I've been getting my sugar the wrong way. <laughs> Did you ever go into a restaurant and say, hey, I'd like a Coke? And they said, no, we only serve Pepsi. And you went, well, fuck you! <laughs> Son of a bitch! What kind of a dump is this? Well, listen, fuck nuts, I'm going across the street. I'm gonna go eat buckets of shit. That's right, buckets of shit. I know the food's lousy, but they serve a Coke. <laughs> Pepsi did an ad this year at the Super Bowl that they're still running. It's the most staggering piece of advertising I've ever seen in my life. It's the one with Britney Spears. Some of you have seen that, some of you haven't. The ones you haven't will now see it all the time. Because that's the way it works, all right? It, literally, guy next door to you says, hey, there's a bear shitting everywhere. And you go, oh, that's ridiculous. And the next day, the bear is following you around. <laughs> Britney Spears comes out. She's singing about Pepsi, but you don't know what she's singing because she can't fucking sing. <laughs> So what you have is this, titty, 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 ass, 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 titty, 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 ass, ass, big ass. Titty, 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 ass, ass, titty, titty, ass, titty, ass. Right after titty, titty, ass, they cut to a giant billboard. On it, a big, big Pepsi bottle. Biggest one you'll ever see, ever. Top pops off, fireworks shoot, as high as you can imagine in the night sky. And we know what that is, don't we? <laughs> that is an ejaculation. I know, because I've had a few. There may not have been colors, but a man can dream. So what is Pepsi saying? They're saying if you drink Pepsi, you're gonna come in your pants. And if that were the case, we'd all be at home watching the Weather Channel, wouldn't we? <laughs> that would have been a sufficient ad. That's enough. But then things got strange. They cut to Robert Dole. Okay, now this is why I'm glad I don't do drugs anymore. Because that's the kind of thing that could keep me in my seat for a day and a half. I thought it was another ad, but no. Robert Dole is watching Britney Spears too. And he's not even in a house. He's like in a bunker somewhere, <laughs> far away from Elizabeth. <laughs> he's got a weird smile on his face, but even weirder is he's watching it with his dog. <laughs> and then he turns to the dog and goes, easy big fella. <laughs> like he's holding the dog's dick or something. Oh, yes. I felt unclean after I watched that. I had to shower and everything. But then it was halftime. 
and halftime is the best. If you want to know exactly where the American culture is, at that point in time, at that year, you watch the Super Bowl at halftime. It is unbelievable. It has gotten exponentially worse in my lifetime. I use the word exponentially because I learned it in a math class. And that's the first sentence I've ever fucking been able to use it in. <laughs> By exponentially, I mean shittier and shittier and shittier. And this year was, didn't let me down at all because it was the shittiest. It was brought to you by MTV. Because when I think music, well, yeah, I think MTV. The people who during my lifetime have done everything they can to destroy music. Well, then I'll continue for those of you who didn't applaud. Just to prove my point. MTV is not music. Music is a wonderful thing. It's like a drug, really. It's played and it goes in our ear, and we get a vision. MTV is a video, and that goes where? In your eye. This is an eye, ear. There's a big fuck difference. And if you get a vision in your head after you listen to some music, and you go home and turn on MTV, and the video they show is the vision you had, kill yourself. You're better off coming back as a lobster. <laughs> so who did MTV get to play at halftime? They got in sync. Because when I think football, I think in sync. <laughs> Unlike most Americans, I'd never heard in sync. Because usually when they come on, I like to take a pencil and shove it in my ear. I'd never seen them because I do not track these fuckers. And I was shocked. I did not know this considering they have a demographic of young girls. In sync is gay. Oh yes, Atlanta. And I can tell by your reaction, you're a little shocked. Aren't you? Well, they are gay. Gay, 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 gay. They may not know they're gay, but they are rooty, tooty, fresh and fruity. And I don't know who their manager is, but he's gay too. <laughs> In Sync would have been enough. That's a halftime show. And maybe if I'd heard him sing a couple of songs, maybe I'd understand what all the ruckus is about. Ruckus, a word I've never fucking used. <laughs> so then, they bring on who? Aerosmith. They now have In Sync and Aerosmith. Now I'm really <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> How did they decide on In Sync and Aerosmith? Where did that decision come from? One MTV executive turned to another and said, who should we get at halftime at the Super Bowl? And then he took a shovel and whacked the guy across the head. And then he said, well, NSYNC and Aerosmith. When they were playing together, it wasn't music. It was the sound of chaos. It was unbelievable. I knew it was chaos because you could hear pigs being slaughtered. Women were weeping and men were gnashing their teeth. And there were sounds so hideous, I cannot describe them to you or you will flee from the room. It was unbelievable. And while I listened, a vision came into my head. I'm embarrassed to tell you this, but I felt at this point in time, I'd rather be seeing donkeys fucking. I told you I'm not happy. It's not like I sit in my New York apartment and pine to see livestock go at it. When you've got InSync and Aerosmith, you know what I say? I say, bring on the burrows. And if you're going to have uh, donkeys fucking on television, be sure there's a musical soundtrack. Because if you have donkeys fucking and it's quiet, that's perverted. There's a fine line. Don't cross it. In singing Aerosmith would have been enough, but no. They were joined by Britney Spears. Now I've got InSync, Aerosmith, and Britney Spears. I have a trifecta from hell. <laughs> but I was lucky. I had a spoon in my hand. And I shoved it up my ass. <laughs> Why, you might ask? <laughs> to distract myself from the pain.
Because if I'm gonna hurt that much, I'm gonna do it to myself. And you know what we call that? Empowerment. I learned that from Oprah. <laughs> I'm very excited about next year's halftime. Apparently they're just gonna fly planes over the stadium and drop shit on it. <laughs> shit and fireworks, it's gonna be grand. <laughs> One of the reasons I'm glad to be back in Atlanta is since I was here last time, I made an extraordinary discovery that I really wanna share with you. It's kind of overwhelming, much more so than the discovery that NSYNC was gay. You see, I travel a lot. And the fact of the matter is, in my travels, I, I, I found out something that, that changed the way I look at things. From the beginning of time, man has looked at the heavens and firmly believed that the universe ends out in space. It's not true. The end of the universe happens to be in the United States. I have seen it. And, oddly enough, it's in Houston, Texas. I know, I know, I was shocked too. I left the comedy club there and walked down the street. On one corner, there was a Starbucks. And across the street from that Starbucks, in the exact same building as that Starbucks, was a Starbucks. At first, I thought the sun was playing tricks with my eyes. But no, there was a Starbucks across from a Starbucks. And that, my friends, is the end of the universe. People have said to me, how do you know? And I say, go there. Stand between those two Starbucks. Look at your watch. Time stands still. And if you turn this way and look just at this Starbucks, immediately you think, you know, when I turn around, there cannot possibly be a Starbucks behind me. No one would have been that stupid to have built a Starbucks across from a Starbucks. And if there was a just and loving God, he wouldn't allow that kind of shit to go down. So you turn slowly, thinking, well, I'll see a Gap or a Denny's, maybe even a mobile station. But there's a Starbucks! What do you think the man was thinking who stood in the empty lot and looked across the street at the Starbucks that was already built? When he turned to his wife and kids and said, you know, I have a vision. I'm gonna build a Starbucks across from the Starbucks. Why would you do that, Daddy? Because it'll be the end of the universe, you little shit. I've pondered long and hard as to what group of people might need a service like that. I mean, a Starbucks across from a Starbucks. And there's only one group of people that would need that. And that group, and there must be a large number of them there, are people with Alzheimer's. <laughs> Don't go, oh. You can't go, oh. It has to be Alzheimer's, okay? It's the only group that makes the joke work. Okay? What if I said, oh, it's, uh, uh, there must be a large amount of Jews living there. You would have all gone, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> oh, the Irish, they love their coffee beans. It's Alzheimer's. It has to be a group that can sit there and drink coffee and then get up, walk to the door, Do you see what I see? <laughs> Son of a bitch, it's a Starbucks. I think it's time we had a cup of Joe. <laughs> I just got a, uh, well, in the last few months, a $300 check from the U.S. government as a part of their tax rebate program. The idea here was that a certain group of people who earned a certain amount of money would be given, sent a check for $300 by the U.S. government, and that check would be used to stimulate the economy. It was the dumbest idea I've ever fucking seen. 
I can't really explain in the kind of language the government would use to explain why it's a dumb fuck idea. And it's not from me not trying. I tried to understand this stuff when I was young. I took an economics class, but it was taught at 8 o'clock in the morning. And there's not a goddamn thing that you're going to learn out of one bloodshot eye. I grabbed the teacher. I said, listen, you prick. Why are you teaching you now? You want to keep this shit a secret? See, the Democrats and the Republicans knew that we had this whole stack of money called the surplus. Tons of it. There was so much, we were just going to go crazy. And the thing was, is they decided to send it to us because all the bridges and roads were in perfect shape. Schools were really... Uh -huh. And, son of a bitch, airport security couldn't be tighter. So they sent these $300 checks to a certain group of people, and other people who could have really used the money got a poke in the eye. I knew this wasn't going to work because nobody, nobody got a $300 check and looked at it and went, son of a bitch, free at last. God damn it. $25 for the house payment, $4 for the car payment, eight cents for gas. I'm home free. All $300 did was remind people how fucked they are. $300 would have stimulated the economy if it was 1950 fucking six. And you could buy something. We'd have been better off if they sent us blockbuster video coupons. I think the only way it would have stimulated the economy is if everybody got the $300 check and spent it at the exact same moment. So we'd all have to line up and get ready and go, now! May not have stimulated the economy, but it would have been fun. <laughs> a lot of people didn't get a check for $300. Some people got checks for like $18.32, which is a great check to get if you want to have something to hold your dick with. <laughs> Here's the kicker. $34 million is the cost of the letter that was sent by the U.S. government to inform the people that their check was in the mail. I wish the government had just come in my mouth. Yeah. Some of you are taking that a little too literally, but I don't want to see Dashiell or any of those guys' penises. No. Just making a point. The president, in a number of his speeches, has talked about how American common sense will see us through what's occurring now. I was really excited to hear about it because I've never fucking seen it. And I think that's the problem. The one thing that I've kind one of the things I've gotten out of September 11th is we, got, we have no common sense. We haven't a clue, especially with the news that has followed. We haven't a lick of it. We don't as a country. If we had common sense, that kind of shit doesn't happen. And it's not the fault of government, okay? The Republicans and the Democrats can talk about government all they want. Oh, it's government. It's the government. And they talk about it as if it's like a building that's walking around and doing shit. <laughs> government is human beings. That's what the fuck it is. And the reason government sucks is because none of the human beings have any fucking common sense. <laughs> that's why. And none of us do. And it'd be nice if we could get somebody to teach us it, but who the fuck are we going to get? <laughs> we have common sense occasionally. Occasionally you see, go, look. There it is, and then it's gone. <laughs> if we have common sense, you put the letter in with the check, asshole. <laughs> On the 12th of September, the U.S. government basically announced that there are certain things that can no longer be sold at airports. At the top of the list, knives. <laughs> So let's try to get this straight. Um, we, as a people, were selling knives at airports. All of us. All of us. And none of us noticed. None of us noticed because if you saw a knife sold at the airport, you probably were like me. You went, well, 
I must be hallucinating. <laughs> One too many drinks. <laughs> Who would fucking sell a knife at an airport? <laughs> and then you ran to the plane. The FAA didn't say anything. The, the, the idiot who runs the store was fucking selling a knife. He didn't even have the common sense. It's got nothing to do with terrorists. You don't sell a knife to somebody who's getting into a confined space where they can drink all they want. And as they're sitting in coach, they're thinking, fuck, I should be in first class. So they have a few more drinks and they get a little angrier. And then at that point, you gotta think they gotta take a piss. And there's a big long line and they're thinking, not anymore. What kind of a person going back to home and hearth, wandering through the airport, stops for a moment and goes, I gotta buy a knife. <laughs> the kids have a coconut, I'll buy a machete! <laughs> safest, safest place to travel from. I did it this year, a few months ago, Macon, Georgia. No place is safer. Unbelievable security. In a waiting room that's this big, they have the equipment there, and there are five people, two of the National Guardsmen, three security people. The most amount of people that can fit in there, and the most amount of people can get in one of those little Buddy Holly fuck planes they got. <laughs> is 15 people. So there are 15 of us, five security people. I think we got it covered. It's one, for, it's one person for every three people. Son of a bitch. I wish that was a classroom. <laughs> they looked. They sent all my stuff through. And then, as they do now, they randomly pick someone for a search. And I get picked a fair amount. And it doesn't bother me at all. Because they say it's a lottery. And I never win a lottery. <laughs> so when it happens, I go, I won, suckers. And they searched my bags, and then I walked to here, <laughs> where they would take my ticket before I get on the plane, where they have a random search. <laughs> they did me again. They did it again. No more than nine feet apart, they looked through my bags twice. That's the safest flight I was on. The son of a bitch, who knows? I might have been trying to blow myself up that day. <laughs> we went from utterly shitty airport security to sort of shitty, shitty airport security. There's been no change in airport security. Airport security at this point is completely psychotic. It has nothing to do with reality. We have never had a lick of common sense. We didn't do shit before, and now we respond like, oh, fuck, we gotta do everything. <laughs> We're gonna have somebody here who just reads about security while people are going through. And someone will sing a song about it. It's fucking unbelievable. I was in Newark Airport and I watched as a, a, a mother of two, she's, she's traveling with twins. They're two years old, okay? And she's alone and they told her to put her strollers onto the conveyor belt so they could be x-rayed. Why? 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 And I've had arguments and lines with people, and I'm getting this close to some sort of problem. <laughs> well, Lewis, we just don't know. Well, yeah, we do know. We know that a mother with twins isn't going to be fucking with anybody. At what point does a mother with twins have time to trundle down to the wood shop <laughs> and turn the stroller into a weapon, asshole? <laughs> if the kids looked a little malnourished, I'd buy your fucking theory. And if you got a stroller that's a weapon, figure it out. How long is it going to take a two-year-old to find it? <laughs> Look, mommy. <laughs> you don't fuck with that mother. You get her onto that plane as quickly as possible and make sure those kids are happy because the only terrors she's bringing on that plane are those two little fuckers. <laughs> What's she going to do? Let's say she's carrying a weapon. 
Let's say she's got a, 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 she's carrying something in her bra. At what point is she going to make this this happen? Huh? At what point is she going to turn to the person sitting next to her and go, well, you hold Frankie and you hold Estelle. I got to go to the cockpit and kick some ass. <laughs> I was in Omaha, Nebraska, which is Paris compared to Rolla, Missouri. <laughs> and it was there that I saw an elderly woman, late 70s, weighs about 85, 90 pounds, frail, being pushed through the airport in the airport wheelchair. She was, she was mobile. A lot of the elderly, they take through the airport now, because a lot of the elderly may be mobile, but she was the kind of mobile, if you went like this, she'd fall down. <laughs> they patted her down. I am not making this up. They patted her down. They patted her legs, and then they patted her, her bird-like arms. <laughs> then they pushed her over and patted her back, because I guess they were searching for a hump where she might have hidden some weaponry. And then, in an extraordinary moment, the gentleman who'd been patting her down brought over the female security guard who looked like the, uh, the warden in one of those lesbian prison movies. She patted the bottom of the wheelchair. She patted the woman's ass. And as I watched this, I thought, you know, it's always important, remember this, bring rawhide with you. Because when you see something like that, your immediate reaction is, hey, you fucking stop it, you fucking morons. Back off, back the fuck off. But you can't do that because your journey will end. So you bring the rawhide and you put it in your mouth and you see that and you twitch for a while. And then uh, that works in your favor because they think you're having a seizure so they put you at the front of the plane. The two people who patted her down should have been immediately taken away for psychiatric care because the stress of the job had gotten to them. They'd reached a point where their paranoia had overtaken them. There's no reason that you examine this woman because the enemy may be unscrupulous, but they are not masters of disguise. <laughs> anyone who cannot lift their own bag and put it into the overhead, anybody who can't do that, that's it. You, you go on board. We don't need to search them. We don't need to search them. We need to search people who might be strong and can pull shit off. That's the deal. That's the deal. They have made us completely nuts. They have won on that level. They have made security crazy on a level that is just stupid. The most amazing one I saw was a woman in a motorized wheelchair, okay? Can't walk, can't walk, can't fucking walk. What's she gonna do, spit on you? She can't walk. Does she need a sign? She's in a motorized wheelchair. Maybe she should have had a sign in eight different languages. Can't walk, can't get out of the chair. Impossible, need help. It'd be one thing if she looked strange, she didn't look strange. It'd be one thing, you know, but she looked literally, she had striking gray hair, a beautiful dress on, wonderful jewelry, very dignified looking. The way I describe her, and it's the only way that I really could figure out to make it very specific, she looked as if Protestantism had sprung from her womb. <laughs> they x-rayed her bags and said they had to take a closer look, because I guess she had like a nail clipper and would just go berserk. What's she gonna have in the bag? A flamethrower, asshole? It's one thing if she was like in a clown costume and her orange wig was askew and the makeup was all fucked up, you know? And she had a little monkey on her lap and she had, was playing with its balls, okay? Then I'm right with you. Let's go through the bag. Let us check the bag, okay? No tell them what she got snakes in there, I don't know. You let her through. The reason you let her through is because if the enemy has actually hired her to work for them, they deserve to win. <laughs> it's this simple. The machinery in the airports doesn't work. So the whole thing is a moot point. It's an exercise in stupidity. The stuff doesn't work. It never worked. 
It's not the people. It's not whether the people work for the government. It's all bullshit. This stuff doesn't work. If it worked, we would catch people. <laughs> I mean, granted, the, the, the people thing is kind of important because in Los Angeles the other day, they actually sent a bunch of people through and then they had to close the airport because somebody hadn't turned the metal detector on. Now, that to me is, well, the, first off, you just take them out back and get a paddle and you spank their ass. You do. You just spank their ass. I'm serious. That's when you give somebody a spanking. And you do it a lot until they're crying. I'm serious. Not in front of people. I don't mean to shame them, but that's fucking you. That's the, that's the, that's it. That's the first thing. Turn on the shit. That's the first fucking thing. But the stuff doesn't work. The x-ray machine doesn't work. People have argued with me about that. It's bullshit. I don't care. It's got to be really good. It's got to be something that when you put something in there, the thing goes, fuck, look, here it is. Okay? That's what it's got to be. And anything else is bullshit. I've looked at my goddamn bag when it's gone through there, and I've said, son of a bitch, I didn't know I owned a fishing pole. <laughs> you build a piece of equipment that works. It's that goddamn important. It should have been done before. They don't do it. They build other shit. You know, they, build a, they build a thing so that we can watch the war at night. That's what we were doing. We're watching the fucking war at night. It's night, but it's day. That's fucking different from spring and fall. If you can turn night into day, don't tell me you can't figure this out. You're full of shit. Don't tell me if that in my lifetime, I went from a rotary phone that, was, that is so big and so heavy that if a puma came at me, I could kill it. And now they got a cell phone that's half the size of this, and apparently when you shove it up your ass, a fax comes out. <laughs> so they can build it. The metal detectors don't work either. I know that. The metal detectors don't work at all. I know that because I go through the metal detector. And then they say, oh, we're going to have to check you. Well, I went through the metal detector. <laughs> that should be it. But then they need to check you again. Well, then that means that doesn't fucking work, does it? <laughs> All right? So then they got a thing called a wand, and it's the same thing. It's like a metal detector in your hand. And they go, woo. <laughs> and they do that, and then I'm clear. And then they say, now we're going to have to uh, patch you down. Well, then that fucking thing didn't work either, did it? <laughs> and if what you really need to do is pat us down, then pat us down. Pat us the fuck down. Don't do this bullshit. Don't send me two through two fake things that don't work. Pat us down. Don't waste the time. Or just have a stick and go, ooga booga, ooga booga. <laughs> things went crazy after September 11th. The news reporting in this country went completely nuts. All of them, CNN, MSNBC, C-SPAN, any of the ones, those basic 24-hour new Fox Network news, totally insane. What we needed, literally, on September 12th and the week that followed was a, a very precise history lesson of the country that we were dealing with and the people that we were dealing with and the religion that we were dealing with. But we didn't get that. It's the way it should have been. Because none of us wanted to go through it. If anybody even said, like on September 10th, well, you know, this week we're all going to stop and we're going to have a history lesson about Afghanistan, and then we're going to study Islam in a group called the Taliban, and everybody in the room would go, eh, fuck you. <laughs> but that's what needed to be done, and it wasn't done. What was done was is that they couldn't get information to us fast enough. All of a sudden, there was more information than had ever existed at any point in time. <laughs> so they all started running that fucking thing on the bottom with information going this way going as fast as possible, so you can only pick up things like terror in your neighborhood. What the fuck? <laughs> Giant dung beetle. <laughs> Could cause scabbing. <laughs> and that wasn't enough. Then they started running something under it, going the other way. <laughs> and then they had weather on the right side, and then they had that Bloomberg thing, that goddamn... T ticker tape shit where they tell you what the Dow Jones is at so you know somebody's getting rich but it ain't fucking you. <laughs> and in the corner there's a cartoon rabbit who's wiping himself. <laughs> and 
in the midst of all this is this head that's talking at you with pictures behind it. And you go, what the fuck? <laughs> Within three days of this war's beginning, I had ADD. <laughs> Certain people actually snapped after 9-11. People went crazy. Jerry Falwell, who wasn't far from the finish line. <laughs> I believe he actually lapped himself. <laughs> when he spoke to Pat Robertson, who was just a foot behind him in the race. He said the reason 9-11 occurred was because God allowed it to occur because there were certain people that lived in this country, certain groups. Groups like, and I'm quoting, the Pagans, which is, uh, they're a motorcycle group. <laughs> so I don't know what the problem was there. And, and he mentioned the feminists, which I thought was rather remarkable. I didn't even know he knew what a feminist was. I was surprised to see the word because you don't really see it in print much except kind of in a historical context. And I thought that's interesting. You thought it was the feminists. That's what upset God. To think that during this century, women had actually said, I'm not working in the kitchen anymore. I'm gonna join the workforce. I wanna be a part of the workforce. I wanna make decisions too. And not only that, I want the same money as a man. And, and I want just as much power as a man. And I wanna be in charge of my own destiny. And God apparently looked down into the kitchen and there was no stew on the stove. And the spice rack was in disarray. <laughs> and God saw this, and he was not pleased. And so he said, I will smoke them! <laughs> if I learned anything from um, September 11th, it's the fact that the way in which I deal with, uh, with trauma is, is through humor. That's how I do it. That's basically the way I, that's my coping mechanism. Um, and I think that uh, patriotism, when something like that occurs, is very important. And by being patriotic, I mean getting that we, we as a country and we as a people have to get together and pledge allegiance to each other and our country, and then, you know, so that we remind ourselves. And I think that was an important lesson. And we lose sight of that. But then, when we get sight of it, we go insane. We don't have to sing the lyrics to every patriotic song ever written. We don't have to do that. We don't have to know all those lyrics. Nobody knows all those fucking lyrics. And a lot of those lyrics weren't sung before because they're stupid fucking words. Shut up! You get together and you agree and that's the deal. There's no need to, God damn it, here, let's have some more planes fly over and shoot some guns into the sky, and boy, oh boy, let's play ball. Fucking no, let's stop again and do it over. <laughs> no! Three and a half hours before the NFL game came on, they had NFL's tribute to America. Well, there's two things. There's a concept for you. The National Football League who can't present football properly is now going to present America to me. <laughs> and by the time, literally, they started to kick off, I was sick of freedom. <laughs> I pined to be enslaved. I said, I wish a country would conquer me so I don't have to watch this shit. <laughs> Patriotism is important. And religion is vital. Uh, and, I, and it's an extraordinary, and that's how people really, I've watched a lot of my friends function because of their faith. Without a sense of humor, religion and patriotism can get crazy. <laughs> religion and patriotism need humor, or, or people go nuts. And we see that in our enemy. That's what happened to the Taliban. That's what the Al-Qaeda are all about. These are people who have no sense of humor. It's the bottom line. They've got... You can't argue with the fact they have a religion and they have a faith. And they certainly believe in, it, in a certain ideal. It may be completely nuts, but they believe in it. You know that a people doesn't have a sense of humor when somebody could actually stand up in the room and go, you know, if you commit suicide for Allah when you die, 
you will immediately be met in heaven by 70 virgins. <laughs> and that nobody in the room just goes, ah, <laughs> son of a bitch, that was great. Because you know, it's an extraordinary amount of faith to believe that when you die, you're going to meet 70 virgins in heaven. How could you even conceive of that when I haven't met one on earth? Thanks. Lewis Black!